Welcome to operations on Paul Skull's Pelican Bay Railroad. I got the opportunity to operate there a number of times before he unfortunately passed away. And these are some video clips that I took at several of his operating sessions. And I thought I would put them all together and hope you enjoy watching what was once one of the finest layouts in the world. I've got this book called The Forgotten Soldier, which is pretty written by a, uh, a guy who, as a young French teenager, joined the Wehrmacht. That combine caboose was one of my favorite pieces of rolling stock. I wish I could remember more. These videos were taken in 2010 and 2011. Of course, it's now, there's that caboose again. It's now uh, 2021, so I'll do what I can to remember things, but you may just have to use your imagination. This S-curve was one of my favorite train-watching spots. All the way on the other side of the layout, there was a scene here that he was rebuilding, as you can see from the white plaster scenery in the upper right-hand corner. And he didn't like the way this bridge looked, so he tore it out and replaced it with a pile trestle, which you can see in some of his later photos. When he took the bridge out, he asked me if I wanted it, because he didn't have any use for it, and it was an HO scale kit that he had built. So, of course, I said yes, and I'll let you find it on my layout and some of my other videos on this channel. This was a tipple for cinnabar ore that he had built along the main line. And there's a shot down that bridge that he then replaced with a trestle. The earlier train we saw was empties going in one direction. Now we have the loads of ore coming back in the other direction. Paul took a lot of care to fine tune his tsunami decoders in the steam engines and they just sounded beautiful. This scene was so realistic I had to dip my finger in the water to make sure it really was a model. This was a busy town where we had meets between trains. You can see here one train's waiting while the other one's coming into the siding. And a third one is coming in from the main line in the distance there. Another great S-curve. This is a train going the other direction past that cinnabar mine, heading west. Doesn't that riverbed look real? Now our ore train is proceeding, having met its meat, and it's going by the very detailed kerosene refinery that he had scratch built. That tunnel was the connection between the two rooms that the layout was built in. Yeah. 
wants to, wants to do the lanyards for the main tag for the convention. I really like S curves. I don't know about you. Especially when they involve open top or cars that are short. This layout was set in the year 1895, so all he needed was two telegraph wires on those poles between stations. It's beautiful the way he strung them up. On the east end of the railroad, there was a very detailed town scene, which was very complicated to switch. Here's a train coming out of East Staging, approaching the town. I was always waiting for those seagulls to fly away, but they never did. This was an SN3 layout, and it goes without saying it was all hand-laid track. The westbound flat cars tended to be empty like this, but of course going eastbound they would generally be full of lumber. You can see they hadn't invented the automobile yet. Looks like there was a switch engine working this town. Now over on the west end of the railroad, near the ocean, an engine is pulling some reefers out of the fish processing plant. There was also a beautiful sawmill here that would generate those flat car loads to head east. Our final view is the power plant and then the large yard that was in the center of the layout from which all the trains were made up. There was a large roundhouse here with a very detailed interior that you've probably seen in back issues of the Narrow Gage and Short Line Gazette, in which he was a prolific author. And that brings us to the end of this short tribute to Paul Scholes. In the meantime, this is your host, Burr Stewart, wishing you much fun with trains. <laughs>